Hello and welcome. This is Michelle with Paper Stamp Inc. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today where I'm going to share with you how I made these cards using emboss resist technique. It's so much fun. I hope that you'll enjoy it. This channel is all about paper crafting. I love to share tips and techniques and tutorials on 3D projects, cards, and craft fair and gift items. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you get notifications of future projects. So these cards were made using an emboss resist technique and I love playing with all the different color combinations you can do. So take this technique, stretch it, and just have fun playing with color. Let's go ahead and set these aside and let's get inky. All right, so I'm going to do two cards today and I'm just going to show you the embossing on one of those. For the sake of the time of the video, I chose to go ahead and emboss the one with the flowers on it ahead of time. And I almost forgot to put something down. I don't want to get that embossing ink on my pad there. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper. But the, I used that embossing buddy first just to get rid of any static on my paper. And then I'm going to come in with this leaf. And I find that leaves and florals or even geometric patterns are really great options for this technique. And I'm just going to rotate my stamp as I'm going through. It is hard to see um, that clear on the white. And, you know, I mean, what I'm using is Versamark embossing ink. If you haven't used that before, it's also great for doing like tone on tone coloring. It's a really wet ink. So you are going to want to let it dry if you do that. But if you just stamp it on colored cardstock, you're going to get just a like tone on tone look, a nice soft look. But you do want to make sure you, you dry that before you start doing anything else with it because it will stay wet longer. That's what makes it great for embossing. It's uh, going to keep that stickiness for a while while I finish stamping all of these images on so that we can put our embossing powder on here. So the more you rotate your leaves, I, I find it very easy to just have my patterns look very patterned, I guess. I'm looking for a more of a random look on this, a scattered leaves kind of thing, but uh, I'm trying to fill in little gaps and making sure that I have leaves that are going off the edge of the card panel. This panel is four and a quarter by five and a half, so I, I did do it the full size of a card front and that allows me to be able to trim that down when I'm done. So if I have one edge that maybe I'm not as happy with, it just gives me a little flexibility to do a panel that's always a little bit larger than what you want in the end. So now that we've got all of that Versamark ink on there, I'm going to bring in some clear embossing powder. Now I like to do this over a coffee filter. You can see a little bit of that shine there when I pick that up, hopefully. And it just helps catch all of this fine powder for me. So I'm going to put that under our project and just scatter. This is a clear embossing powder. You could use a white one as well, but since I'm using white cardstock, I chose to just use the clear. And I do think the clear works best for this technique in my experience. This is Ranger Clear Embossing Powder, and I will put a link to that down below if you want to um, experiment with this technique as well as the different tools that you'll need to get started in embossing. We're going to move that coffee filter out of the way and big tip, put the lid on your embossing powder before you start heat setting. Um, so I've got my heat gun and I'm just getting that started. Um, takes a, a few moments to warm up and then we're just going to heat through that and I'm going to cut some of this embossing time out because you don't need to watch me do the whole embossing and then we will jump right back into the video. So as that embossing powder heats up, it's actually going to melt a little bit into the paper and on top of the paper. And so you're going to be able to see a nice shine. You do want to make sure you get all of those little bits completely embossed. And I keep moving my heat gun around just to make sure that I'm not burning that paper. And you get this nice shine from the embossing. Now that embossing is going to resist our ink. So whatever is underneath that clear embossing powder is what's going to show in the end. So I'm bringing in 
That's the floral panel to show you. And I'm actually going to start on that one first. So that has time to cool off that other panel. And I'm bringing in my inks. I did decide to speed this part of the video up for you just so you don't have to watch me do the whole time of the embossing. But I'm starting off bringing in my Festive Berries Distress Oxide inks. I do like the Distress inks, particularly for this technique and for blending. I think they're just so smooth and creamy the way they go on. And then I'm bringing in Mustard Seed for the bottom, and I will link these colors and all these tools. So if you want to reproduce this, um, great. You can use other inks for this technique as well. So use what you have on hand. Um, these daubers that um, come from Tim Holtz, I believe is the manufacturer of the ones that I have here that I'm using. Um, they just are very comfortable in my hand and I find that they work really well for blending. So I blended those two colors together and got a little bit of an orange color in the middle and I'm happy with that one. And I'm gonna bring in some greens now for my next one. And we're gonna use peeled paint, um, bundled sage and the twisted citron on here. And so I'm just kind of putting some different splotches down. I could have done uh, more of a ombre technique like on that first one, starting with one color and blending down. In this one, I just wanted to have them kind of have different colors all throughout that panel. And I love this twisted citron. I have to say, this is one of my favorite colors. It's just this super bright, vibrant green. Um, it's got a yellowish undertone to it and um, it's almost a, like a neon color. So it just gives cards a great pop. Um, so I love adding that on and I'm coming back and just putting a little bit of the darker colors back in there. to Make sure I haven't overdone and overshadowed those with the twisted citron. So those are our panels. So now I'm gonna bring in a kitchen towel and just wipe off the top of my panels to get any loose ink that's still sitting on top of that embossing. It does resist it, but there's still gonna be a little bit laying on top of there that we just wanna clean that up. Um, one, we don't want it getting on the recipient's fingers when they're handling this, and two, it's gonna just make this come through so much brighter and crisper. You see how that white just starts to really pop when we wipe it off. Love the bright colors on this one. Let me know down below, which one do you like? Do you like the subtles with the greens or do you like those bright popping colors of the pinks, the oranges and yellows? So I'm gonna trim a quarter inch off of each of these panels and that's gonna leave me with a panel that is gonna be four by five and a quarter. So there's not gonna be a lot of room for matting on this. Um, it's typically the size that I would do for a mat on a card, but I'm going to put a very, very thin mat of black behind this. So I did pre-cut those panels and we're going to bring those in and those panels are four and one eighths by five and three eighths. So you just have an eighth of an inch, which means you're going to get this one sixteenth inch sliver around the edge and it's just enough to give it that extra touch. If you're ever unsure about a color to use for matting, I always grab for my neutrals and black is the most popular choice for me quite often. But navy blue is another great one. Some of your browns, especially your deeper browns. And my cat said decided that he needed to make a little cameo there. Just a, no respect for the video processing at all. Anybody else have a cat? Give me a thumbs up if, if you've got a, a pet that likes to be uh, involved in your crafting area. So I'm going to mount those onto my standard card base. And that's again going to give us just a little tiny mat of white that's going to pick up the white from that um, clear embossing where the white of the, the cardstock actually shines through. Now I have some strips that I pre-embossed earlier, a black with a white embossing on the black cardstock. And this one, I was going to cut a fishtail and my scissors got away from me. So I ended up going with a little slanted look and I actually kind of like that too. So sometimes we just have to adjust on the fly, right? If you've ever had to do some kind of adjusting and made something work, let me know how you overcame an oops on one of your cards and give me a thumbs up if you happen to be sometimes a distracted crafter. <laughs> I'm going to add these foam strips on there and I'll link those below because I get questions often on what I'm using 
with these little skinny strips and I just love them for these thin sentiments. And we're gonna pop one of them, I'm gonna come off the right hand side and the other one I decided to go off of the left hand side just to mix it up a little. And these backgrounds are so beautiful that they don't need a lot of embellishment. Those are the two cards we just did and bringing in the two that I did earlier. Now you could put as much embellishment on these as you'd like or leave them plain. Let me know what you prefer. I hope you found this useful. Until we meet again, make sure you grab your paper stamp and ink and do something creative.